Morning, everyone, and welcome to this morning's uh, uh, Forex session. And thank you so much uh, for your patience in waiting. We started a, a few minutes later than we anticipated. But before we do, uh, head over to see what's happening in the markets and on the charts. May I just draw your attention to the disclaimer that I know you can see on your screen. As you know, uh, trading can be a very risky business, so please, please don't ever think of using money that you cannot afford to lose. And I should also say these sessions are for educational purposes only. They are not a recommendation to buy or sell. Right, for those of you who may be coming along for the first time, we're obviously going to look at uh, the forest market and we focus on the price action and the volume using the methodology that we call volume price analysis. Um, details of the methodology, how we've developed it, where it comes from, it's not original. We uh, we freely admit that it's uh, uh, using price action and volume to determine where the price is, is going next has been around uh, for some considerable time now. Um, it also incorporates principles that were first uh, developed by Richard Wyckoff. This is back in the, the 20s and 30s. So, you know, as I said, in trading, to be honest, there's nothing new and there's nothing new because as people, we don't really change. The markets, I suppose, are all about behavior, human behavior, human emotions, the spectrum between complacency and euphoria, greed, uh, fear, and anything in between. But what uh, a VPA does, it does actually, because it uh, looks at this close relationship between these two leading indicators, um, and if you understand how to, uh, uh, you understand how to interpret that relationship, it will actually help you to determine where the price is going next. But VPA is more than just uh, uh, volume and price action. We have developed other elements that form part of the methodology. And if you uh, don't know if it's the first time you've come across it, then everything is up on Amazon. Um, there are various books for the different markets. There's, and this, this is the box set for the uh, Forex market. But that's just one element that we have to, uh, one skill that we have to develop. Obviously, chart reading is hugely important, but chart reading doesn't happen in, in a vacuum. Uh, it's going to be impacted and driven by all sorts of other factors, um, the fundamental, what's happening in on the fundamental landscape, and also what's happening in other markets, related markets. Um, this is what we call a 3D approach. But I suppose, you know, given what's happening at the moment, perhaps we ought to have a fourth dimension, and that is the political element. Although with Donald, possibly not being, uh, well, he's definitely not going, going to be around as, as president. Um, maybe that element is is going to die down an, a, a little bit um, with the new administration coming in. So that's how, what we're going to be looking at today. From the books, uh, David and I, we took that, we have taken that one step further. We have developed a very comprehensive uh, programme uh, that really takes it on. And people ask and say, well, why should I, you know, why should I look at the program? Can I not get everything from the books? Well, in, in some ways, you know, the books will certainly uh, give you a good understanding, a good uh, basis for it. And we have plenty of traders and investors who simply take the methodology and have ad adapted it and blended into their existing approach um, you know, with their own indicators and what have you. But the uh, what the uh, program does particularly with the uh, technical analysis module you do get a much deeper dive into vpa and particularly the work of richard wyckoff i mean the book can only cover so much and it also you know as you can see the five modules above you've got psychology you've got a fundamental this this is a huge huge program it took us a long time to put this together there's about um, 200 uh, videos david 200? Uh, uh, videos, there's 450 lessons. There's 450 lessons across uh, all. Yes, and? Over, over 250 hours. And there's about 250 hours of videos and there's PDFs, et cetera, et cetera. And you can find the details at quantumtradingeducation.com. After that, as well, we've recently introduced a funded um, element to the program. If you are a student or uh, you're a trader who's taken the program, you, can, you have the option to take up um, the opportunity to basically trade um, uh, our money. Uh, you don't, it's, there's absolutely no risk to you. There's an evaluation uh, stage. Uh, we set you um, uh, some uh, some targets and, uh, you, you know, if you work your way through the program, you can actually end up uh, handling the trading 
a two million dollar account again all the details are at quantumtradingeducation.com but as part of the program um, we've also developed for ourselves this is where after the books, we looked at uh, the forex markets and we looked at uh, particular indicators to help us uh, break down the forex market into its constituent parts, which is the individual currencies, the, the flow of money going into uh, the individual uh, currencies and then the currency pairs. And we've come up with very specialist indicators for, the, uh, for this market and you will see us using them in these sessions. Uh, or oh, There's actually four or specific forex ones which we have put together in the currency dashboard but you can uh, they can be bought individually we have actually developed other indicators to support the VPA methodology and again we the best way to see all these things VPA the indicators how we put everything together is really to look at some charts so that's where I'm going to be heading next right is this usually this is um my first stop when I uh, come to my PC in the morning. I've actually only got two time frames here that you can see. I've got the hourly and I have the 15 minute time frame. Uh, David actually uses more. He sometimes has three, maybe has four. I've just sort of stuck to two. It just it's just a personal preference. Uh, we don't um, we, we say you should use more than one. Um, it takes time to build up to maybe looking at three or even four time frames simultaneously but i think two i think most of us can cope with that and the the time frames themselves the the uh, what time frames you use well if you're with mt4 you're obviously going to be restricted to the time frames that are uh, offered by the platform mt5 this is actually from the mt5 platform you have a, a wider choice if you then go onto ninja and trade station you go down to seconds uh, you know um so but I'm, I'm, I'm sticking to the hour and the 15 because I know uh, a lot of people who come to these sessions are, you know, simply use the MT4 platform. Now, why the hour and why um, the 15? Right, the hourly chart is absolutely uh, 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 brilliant because it's, it's, uh, it, it's far enough, uh, uh, it's, um, uh, the, the time frame gives us a perspective of basically what's been happening uh, since uh, uh, since the um, Asia session, what happened uh, yesterday, and it's you know it's going to be moving. It's going to you know the hourly chart. It's it's not too far. The four hour. I'm personally, it's much too far out. It's interesting to look at, and certainly the daily you can look at for context. But it's just a great time frame to tell us where we are at the moment, where we've been, and where we are likely to be going and the 15 is really obviously closer to the price action but not so close that uh, you know the, uh, the the price is you, know, you can't sort of keep up with what is going and what we're looking at here is basically well we could very clearly we've got uh, uh, the British pound the British pound is always going to be uh, sort of center stage uh, in certainly Europe and London so you're always going to get a movement in the British pound, obviously the euro as well, where we can see the euro has been uh, uh, has been selling off, and it looks like it's uh, continuing to sell off. And we look at the 15, and you know that that trend that we are seeing, that dominant move that we're seeing in the hourly chart, looks to be continuing in the faster time frame as of the 15 minute chart. Now, obviously, when uh, um, a currency or a market gets to what we call this oversold and overbought uh, situation, this overextension, if you like, then we are going to get a, uh, a pullback, a correction, a reversal. And for you as a trader, I've got the hour and the 15. The hour you can use as your benchmark. The 15, or if you want to go down to the five, is going to be uh, possibly for your entry. I also have a, a Renko chart, which is uh, not a time-based chart, and I'll show you how I use that when we have a look at my profile. So looking at the hourly chart gives me a good context of what is being what has been happening, not just from the perspective of the flows into these individual currencies, but it also gives me um, an instant heads up as to sentiment, because sentiment um, 
talked about sentiment, the spectrum of sentiment between complacency, euphoria, fear and greed, you know, whichever, whatever termin terminology you want to use. That is always going to be reflected in the Forex market by the buying and selling of individual currency, specific individual currencies and specific individual uh, and currency pairs. And the, the, the currencies that your eye is always drawn to with regard to sentiment is uh, something like the Aussie dollar, which is the blue. You're going to be looking at the Kiwi, uh, the, the CAD as well, but particularly the, uh, the, the Japanese yen. And we can see here the Japanese yen has been selling and is continuing to sell. What does that tell us? Well, it tells us that there's a very good chance that when we move over to something like investing.com, uh, to get a feel for what is happening in the futures market, we can see immediately that uh, you know the market is in a, certainly in a better mood than it was yesterday. Um, it was in a very good mood on Friday, despite the the terrible uh, jobs uh, uh, data. But it, it's looking a little bit more uh, uh, positive. Why? Because the uh, this is the uh, the futures for the Dow Jones. This is the futures for the S and P 500. Let's have a look at the at uh, the Nasdaq. The futures for the Nasdaq. If it uh, loads in a minute, yep, they're they're up as well. So you know, it's um, as I said, it's the mood is more positive, and that is reflected in what is going on in uh in the currencies we also look at the vix the vix is in in the 20s so it's not it's not elevated um and it immediately we've gained that information simply by looking at what these individual currencies are doing up here i actually have what we call our currency matrix what it does it takes the data from the individual currencies pairs it up and tells us which where where are the moves at the moment which currency pairs are the strongest in terms of uh, being bought and the weakest weakest in, ter in terms of being sold now the other currency we've got to talk about is the us dollar the us dollar is selling off and it looks like it's selling off uh, quite nicely and that's reflected here let's highlight the dollar where have we got which of the dollar pairs uh, have we got the strongest moves in and obviously we've got a very nice move going on in the Aussie dollar at the moment a um, bit of the others are sort of a bit of a lagging behind at the moment so we've got the Aussie dollar at the top and we've got some a nice move in the dollar cad and I think David was in you in the dollar cad yesterday weren't you darling yeah yeah so that's something to uh, we can have a look we can have a look at that as well and we can see that on the hourly how is that what is actually going on uh, on the 15 minute chart? Is that sort of being reflected? Are we actually seeing maybe a little correction to that trend that we see in uh, the hourly chart? And it looks like there is at the moment because what if we have here? Uh, we've got some buying of the dollar and we have the Aussie going up, but possibly that is going to roll over and this is what we have to get to grips with as traders what we see in one time frame maybe our benchmark time frame which is for me is the hourly chart um, we see a move and we see that that you know the, uh, the move may be maybe in progress or maybe uh, a potential for a reversal and the reversal certainly here you would be looking at something like the um uh, the, the british pound and what's interesting actually it's the only currency that's overbought can you see david everything yeah. else is either still climbing or still falling which is actually quite unusual so that's what our year our hourly chart is is telling us but when we're on the faster time frames um there may be opportunities to trade against that dominant theme that dominant trend and that brings in all sorts of factors about risk uh, is it a, sometimes is a counter trend trade viable well you know i can't give you i can't give you a black and uh, white answer i can't say a definite yes or a definite no it all depends it all depends on you how much uh, how much risk you want to take uh, it also depends on whether there's enough of a range in that counter uh, that counter trend trade and so on and so on and also where you are in the session and sessions i can't stress this strongly enough because uh, 
we talk about the London session, but there's also another uh, period in the Forex 24-hour uh, uh, cycle, which is the London fix. And there was an example yesterday where um, the pound was really not behaving as it should have been for me in the morning. In fact, I was uh, taken out of a, of, of a cable position. But at the London fix, it actually delivered, and it delivered a very nice trade on the pound New Zealand. And I've got some uh, screenshots, and I'll be able to show you of uh, those. And I've also got, um, I'll also explain why, what happened with uh, cable and why it didn't do what it was supposed to do. But I then picked up a really nice trade in CAD yen. Right, I'm going to pass over to David because I need to set up, um, decide um, what's going on certainly with the British pound and pull up some other bits and pieces and then we'll come back and have a look at my screen. Hi everybody, a very warm welcome. Hopefully you can hear me, hopefully you can see my screen. Uh, I've got Ninja Trader up and uh, just move the chat box out of the way. There we go. And I'm on, uh, I've got New Zealand dollar up, um, but I thought I'd just drag this over to start with. Um, there's a nice move developing there. I'll just pop that over there. Can't hear myself in my headset, so clearly something's not right, but never mind. Okay, that's fine. As long as you can hear me, that's great. Um, this, If you were here last week, this is a little FXCM account that um, we, we're doing as a bit of fun this year. Um, and really just to, um, it's based around a, a, a very, very simple rule set. You can see in here, we've only got a few hundred dollars. We had, sorry, just pop that up again. There we go. We're up to $905. Um, I think last week we were about $890, something like that from memory. Um, and the rules on this account are very, very simple. <clears throat> we are only trading a maximum of four micro lots. So we've got four micro lots maximum at any one time. And effectively, that means we're trading at roughly a, a leverage of five to one and every position has a stop loss, which goes without saying. And really, that's it. So it's a maximum of four uh, micro lots only, single micro lots per trade. So only one, we're not, we're not scaling in, scaling out, doing anything like that, nothing fancy, just very, very simple stuff. Um, and we're gonna see how, how much we can build this up during the year. Um, it's gonna take some time, obviously, but the, it's not about the money. And I suppose that's the reason that uh, we wanted to create this, just to really highlight the fact that it's not about the money, it's about the, the pips that you're taking. Uh, yesterday, for example, um, I had three on here. I had the Aussie dollar, I had the dollar CAD, and I had the New Zealand dollar. And I was long New Zealand dollar, Aussie dollar, and I was short dollar CAD. Um, I'll just pop the dollar CAD open. Probably the easiest one to look at. Where are we? Here we are. It was around about this sort of time. This is on the 30 minute. So this is yesterday. Where are we? Um, where are we yesterday? Here we are. Yeah, it was in here. So it was this move here, basically this price waterfall. And as many of you know, I like to trade reversals. That is what I'm looking for the whole time. Um, it's always on my radar. My eye is always drawn to the top and the bottom of the CSI. It's what I'm looking for on the chart. I'm looking for things like this. And um, this came up as a classic. We've got the volatility trigger. Uh, there are lots of other signals as well associated with that, but that certainly caught my eye. And as soon as that catches my eye, then obviously I'm looking for a potential congestion or uh, in this case, a, a full-blown reversal. And just to give you a perspective, I mean, this is on the 30-minute. So the sort of time frames I'm looking at on this um, on this account, they're not down to the one-minute or the five-minute. I'm looking much more at probably the slowest time frame I'll look at on here is 15-minute and anywhere between 30-minute and an hour in terms of the CSI. So that's the kind of time horizon I'm looking at. So these trades will be on. This one, I think, was on for about three or four hours. The same with the Aussie dollar and New Zealand dollar. Obviously, they were to the long side. Uh, where's the other one? Here we are, Aussie dollar. Just pull that one up as well. Um, yeah, what caught my eye here was the was the, the, the two-bar reversal at the bottom here, which is pretty strong. We had a lot of volume preceding it, um, which 
uh, on you know on first appearance it looks like it's going down further and it did but then we got this two bar reversal and that associated with what was going on in terms of the dollar at the time as well which we had up here there we go uh where are we here we are we were up here somewhere there was weakness coming in it looked as though it was trying to rally obviously i haven't got volume on, on here but it was looks as though it was trying to rally we got this pivot then we start to see this weakness coming in and it, it was in around here somewhere but as always you know getting in and this is the point i always make i think we got in around here somewhere or the other probably that one maybe um, and this is the point I always make when you're trading reversals, you're going to have to accept that, you know, these things happen. This doesn't happen instantly. The uh, the buffering that goes on, the, the dollar was very, very strongly overbought at that particular point as far as the CSI was concerned. It was very high on the CSI. There had to come a point at which it would break. So as always with reversals, it's not a question of, of, of whether it's going to break it's w at what point it is going to break and that's why you have to allow much wider stop losses um, to to allow for that buffering but then you take advantage of and the payoff is you take advantage of all of that so we scooped all of that up then it went into congestion and um, to be honest it was flatlining we were getting towards the end of of the the sort of mainline session here uk was closing down and I think I closed out around, I think it was about half past six, something like that. So, you know, it, it, that, that trade was open for maybe five, six hours, something like that. And it delivered something like 40, 50 pips, something of that nature. Um, but the, the, the point is that, you know, you're getting in at these levels, you have to allow for this buffering to go on. But then the payoff is you get all of that. Now, obviously, that candle there just widen this up a bit there we go this candle here you know it's a classic entry candle weakness yes we haven't got any volume under here to confirm it but you know it's a sign the market's trying to rally and falling back then we get a doji then we start to continue down trying to rally falling down and then we're into congestion phase and we get the pivots building and we start to come out the other side and of course you've got trend monitor and everything else alongside that as well where are we? Let's just pop that out of the way. There we go. That's what was happening there. And uh, obviously, I've got the volatility index at the bottom here. So this is basically the sort of time frames I'm looking at. This is on the hour. So I'll either have this on the hour or the 30 minute. And just to change tack, just to jump jump rails for a moment, we have started work on the uh, remaining indicators for trading view. I'm delighted to say that we have. Uh, got all the tools that we need within the Pine script for all the various indicators. So in the next couple of months, the currency matrix will be available, the currency array will be available, the currency heat map will be available, uh, the, vol the, uh, the VPOC will be available and support and resistance. So they will all be available here and we'll, we will also be cleaning them up and we will also be adding on things that we've developed in TradeStation. We will be porting back across here and we will be doing the same, obviously, with all the other platforms as well in due course. We've got an absolute ton of work to do. But just to let you know, that is that is uh, being worked on literally as I speak, which is great. And what I may do here is once we get the, um, the beta versions out, I'll probably populate them here because I'll be using them myself anyway. Um, and you'll see them up running and trading view, which I have to say is a great little platform. Um, and very easy to to link accounts. This is FXCM. As I say, it's got you know nine hundred and five dollars at the moment. We're going to try and get that up to a thousand. And you think, well, that's not very much. And it, I have to say, it's the point that we make in um, we've made in previous sessions. I think we make in the program that you might think if you said to someone, um, sat them down at the beginning of the year as we are here, and said, well, look, actually, I'm going to teach you how you can make hundred dollars in a year. Well, they'd laugh you out of court. They wouldn't understand what you were saying. They'd say, well, yeah, it's hardly interesting, is it? But 100 points here is a lot of pips. $100, rather, is a lot of pips. And that's what it's about when you start. It's not about making money. You're not in this to make money when you start. You are here to find consistency and you are here to make pips on a regular basis. And we always say the same thing. Don't base your expectation on a day because you'll have up days and down days, base it over a month. It allows for the fluctuations where you have good days, bad days, maybe good weeks, bad weeks. But overall, you start to um, 
to, to become consistent and that's what you're looking for so you might say well you know trading this tiddly account doesn't teach me anything well it does actually it teaches you consistency and it teaches you about pip value how many pips you can take over an extended period of time and that's what the funded forex program is about and in fact this is pretty much modeled on the same sort of um, um, risk and, and money management rules it's very very conservative it's very simple um, and obviously I haven't set myself a, a floor of um, a floor of loss but the the actual risk rules around the uh, size that you're trading and the leverage is pretty much identical to what you're trading in a funded account so it's very conservative and that's the whole idea is just just to try and match that that approach but in the funded program what the evaluation stage is is teaching you and what we are trying to establish with the evaluation stage is precisely this that you have a an approach which is consistent which delivers consistency in terms of pip value and once you've delivered that consistency and you've you've you, you've proved to yourself that you can do it then the world is your oyster because thereafter it's purely about having more money and moving up the spectrum of the size of lots you're trading and the amount of money you're trading and it really is as simple as that if you can do it simply with such an account like this then you can do it with a larger account and it's it's those principles uh, that we're trying to to explain in running this account but also the ones you will find if you're on the funded program i know we have we have quite a lot of few of the students now on that program um, and it's be, it's proved to be very, very popular indeed, which is great. So there we go. That's what I was up to yesterday. Um, I don't do this every day, um, but I'll try and uh, keep moving forward and, uh, you know, we'll keep up to date with it as we go. So let's just pop that out of the way. There we go. Move over to Anna. Nice little move developing on uh, New, New Zealand dollar. What caught my eye here was this falling volume. Bear in mind, this is we're moving into Europe here over into London at eight o'clock caught my eye volume falling away we've got a nice spike here doesn't always roll over straight away remember now we're starting to see that develop these are the sort of candles you're always looking for in a price waterfall effort to rise lots of volume underneath looking weak where's it going first stop here low um low volume node here so should move through there pretty rapidly but now we are getting down into some really heavy weather down here we've got lots of support coming into play we've got ton and a half volume and we've got the vpoc there so don't expect this to move much further than than down to this level where it's going to congest if not before i'm going to pass back to anna hold tight oh hi thanks um thanks darling right the um very very quickly what we were looking at uh we can see i said to you the the euro was um well it's, it's still falling on the on the hour but we've had a really nice push up with it on the 15 minute and in fact talking about the new zealand uh that's kind of moved, gone a bit sort of sideways on the hour and actually fallen uh quite nicely on the 15 minute and in fact has delivered a really nice trade on the euro new zealand so if we're going to have a look at it now before i go and just quickly run through a couple of things i did yesterday All right now this is really really interesting but it act because it actually um uh, dovetails very very nicely with the two pairs that i was going to talk about because as we can see here on the hourly chart for the pair it's i wouldn't say it hasn't quite touched the r3 but it's got to this resistance that is marked by what we call the r3 this is the camarilla uh, indicator now I, I explained earlier on about vpa that it is about obviously price action and price and volume but there are three other elements to it uh, there are candles, there are candle patterns, there's time and there is support and resistance. And I cannot stress enough how important support and resistance is and how you determine those areas, those, those, those areas of the chart, those zones of the chart where, where price is likely to uh, pause, congest, uh, possibly reverse. We use uh, price-based support resistance in terms of the Camarilla and also the two special uh, the specialist indicators that we've developed for the MetaQuotes platform and TradeStation and Ninja and we have another 
a price-based uh, support and assistance indicator, which is based on the Camarilla protocol. And the way we've developed it is these are levels which are calculated, they're price-based, the levels on the time frames up to but not including the hour are refreshed every day every time there's there's rollover but the ones on the hourly chart up to the daily chart they remain here for the whole of the week and they are so important and we as i said just a great example of what we're seeing here at the moment you can see here this r3 that this R3 level, look at the times, the number of times, and move right over back to the left-hand side of the chart, how many times the price has reached this area and has actually been rejected, pulled back, corrected. It doesn't mean it's not necessarily going to go through, but what that tells us of itself, this is a very strong region, and it's a very strong region, not just for today, but for the rest of this week. So whilst we have seen this really nice move higher in the Euro New Zealand, and we can see the move higher in the Euro New Zealand as uh, picked up on, this is the three minute chart, um, and we can, see, we can see quite clearly, we can see the move lower, then we have uh, the congestion, then we've got, obviously, as I said, London, ton of volume coming in on London. Volume is also relative to the uh, session that's being traded. So you'll always see much lower bars uh, in Asia Pacific and in those pairs that possibly aren't traded very much in that uh, in that time zone now uh, the euro new zealand obviously it's got the new zealand in it so the chances are it is going to uh, attract some attention from local traders simply because uh, the uh, the um, you know the new zealand is in the pair so we have the move lower so we have the primary trend lower then we have the the, the congestion because nothing moves um, in a straight line Interestingly, it was congesting around what we call the volume point of control. This is, if you like, the fulcrum of this chart. It's the, the VPOC, the volume point of control, also gives us our volume-based support and resistance, as we can see here from the histogram uh, on, to, uh, on the y-axis of the chart. But the volume point of control is that area of the chart where there is no, there, there is no direction, there is congestion, there is consolidation. Traders, the market, has, uh, have decided that they are going to transact. And the longer they transact, they, they contain the price within a reasonably narrow range, you will get um, the uh, the the, uh, the volume over. It's it's really volume over time. It's volume transacted over time. You will see this area of the chart here. It will get uh, it, it will get uh, wider and wider, and it will move further and further over to the left. What that also ha what also happens is the longer a price is in this phase, this type of price action, and this is where Wyckoff's second law comes in, of, of cause and uh, of cause and effect. What happens then when there is a breakaway, when there is a breakout, as we have seen here, and the breakout occurred just on, after the London uh, London Open, you will find that that breakout is 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 going to be uh, very strong and is going to be uh, and is going to go, you know, it's going to have some momentum behind it. That's awfully interesting, but then we have to look at, well, where is it going to go to? How far is it going to go? And that's where your support and resistance comes in. And we have some price-based support uh, resistance here, which is our uh, which is our solid line. The, the lines um, that are that are displayed uh, by this indicator, where it's a solid line, we can assume that it is slightly stronger. Where it's a little sort of hatch line, it is uh, uh, slightly weaker, as it were. Now, what has happened is we've had the move higher. We have a lot of volume coming in under here. We've got a lot of buying coming in uh, preceding this breakout. We've got candles that tell us that there is buying because we've got wicks to the bottom of the candle. And then we do get the move higher. That candle there um, is is quite a, is a widespread, but you know the volume underneath it is certain. And you think, mm, well, you know, is that going to be a fake out? But the price actually does keep on. Uh, the, sort of the, there's a certain amount of momentum behind this price, which 
keeps it going higher and higher. And also, you have to also bear in mind that this would have come in at the London Open. So although it, you know, uh, there's always, you have, what I'm trying to say, there's always this inrush, uh, particularly at London. So you you have to read it in that context. But the most interesting part of this is this, is where is, and this is where you're, you have to have your multiple time frames. On the, the 10 minute, it actually paused at the S, uh, around the S1, it sort of spiked higher. And yeah, we can see there's a congestion phase there. So you would expect it. You know, when price runs into these areas where you've had congestion, it's always going to pause. But the key level is this, and this is where you have to have a, a, a benchmark chart. And that is the hourly chart with these levels on. This is the key level. The R3 is absolutely key. And the number of times, Either I or David, you know, look, it go, it goes into, you know, we go into a trade, everything looks, it, it goes, it's moving along nicely. And one of us says, uh huh, the R3 is coming up now. And you can almost, you know, bet your bottom dollar on it, it is going to pause. And in fact, the indicator itself uh, will tell you there are these little messages up here which you can choose to, uh, um, you know, ignore. But when it comes to uh, the, the R3, it will say um, either a potential for a long or a potential for a short, but you really just have to pay attention to what is happening at around this level here. Now, for actual entry, we saw the move away from the volume point of control by having the, um, uh, the Renko, that's a, a, a next to it as well, then this is the move that you would have captured and this is now looking and it looks like a, you know, potentially a full blown reversal because if we go back to the CSI here, the euro on the hour is actually still, you know, uh, uh, moving lower. So maybe there is more scope for it to go lower. No. And this is where your sessions come in. You know, it's it's nine o'clock. What is going to happen between now and maybe lunchtime? This is a 24 hour market. But in some ways, you can almost plan the best times to be at your uh, at your uh, computer because it does run. It does have its own um, internal rhythm, as it were. So, as I said, you this is why I've decided to come in at this time now we may even move the session further on um in the morning because once all the you know this the nonsense this this surge of volume this surge of participation comes in and the you know the orders are are fulfilled sorry about that um are, are fulfilled and traders are, are joining all the time that's fine Oops. Apologies about that. Um, you can almost um, set your own sort of timetable. You say, well, OK, I'm going to be at my, at my screen between this and this. And it allows you to give some structure to your day. Right now, the S3. Let me just bring up cable and I can actually, which has happened yesterday. And it, again, it was. Um, right, where are we? Oh. There we are. And I want the hourly chart as well. There we are. And we just, I've actually got a nice, a rather nice pen, actually. There we are. Hopefully it'll come up. David, can you see my big yellow blob? I can. Ah, great. Wow. Oh, that's very impressive. I hope you're impressed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, this was it. This was this, this is around of this area here. I was actually looking to go long on I was actually looking to buy the, the British pound and I thought, OK, what am I going to buy the British pound about? Well, the very reason I, said, I know I'll go and buy it against the um, against the uh, against the US dollar. So it was fine. It looked like it was setting up for a nice little um, a, a nice little trade. And it did. And it was fine for, um, you know, a, a while. And then um, I looked at the hourly chart and there was the S3 once again. And we can see here. In fact, I looked at it uh, from a, 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 I was in here in this candle here down on the on the faster time frames. 
And we can see here it had um, it had it had failed there. It had bounced. It had reversed off there. But this was the going long here. It had another go here. It came off, and that was it. In fact, I I I, I moved away from my desk and I was taken out. So this is the importance of the S3. But what happened with the British pound? I said, hope you're impressed. <laughs> the British pound, it did actually reverse off the S3 uh, eventually. And in fact, it, uh, uh, provided a really, really nice uh, trade to the downside. And, you know, we had a uh, rising volume. It was all going very nicely. We had we had weakness. And then we, become, we came up to the, um, this is around, it was just before uh, the London fix when we had a bullish engulfing candle and we had the reversal to uh, the upside. In fact, again, back to the S3, did actually get through, came back to test some uh, congestion and it sort of take, uh, took off um, again. But this was around, as I said, around this level here, the S3, it is such a key level. So that didn't work out. That was fine. That was okay. And then again, the same level came into play on the CAD yen again I'm just showing the hourly one in fact this was to the downside I was looking to take a, 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 a uh, to sell the, the Canadian was being sold uh, sold pretty much across all the pairs and it was really just deciding which you know was going to offer uh, the, the best trading opportunity and in fact it would because the markets were you know uh, it was really the yen pairs that were the, uh, uh, that were being uh, driven um, uh, the driven lower in other words the yen was being bought uh, so I, I looked at, and the Canadian you know was um, uh, was being sold off quite heavily in the other pairs as well and again it came up to it was again the s3 it it, it had got to the s3 by the time I, I looked at it and I thought okay um, it got to the s3 it then went sideways and then it dropped but in dropping it triggered the um, the volatility candle because my my uh, my intention or no, not my intention I was uh, I was anticipating where is it going to go to after it breaks through a particular level and I was actually looking for down here on the S4 which was at, let's have a look uh, 81 um, 12 which would be a nice um, uh, you know a, a, a nice lot of pips but what happened was this is not this is we haven't talked about it so far this is what we call our volatility indicator you can see these purple dots here and the dots here this is what happens when the market suddenly picks up momentum and the price action goes outside of the average true range this is then triggered this was original it's it's triggered in starts off by being triggered in the faster time frames and i saw the trigger coming in in the faster time frames but the Renko chart, um, the advantage of the Renko chart that we have here, I don't think this is going to pick it up here, but if you if you look at that piece of price action there, it will absorb um, the spikes, if you like. That's, that's how Renko works. It's just looking at price action, which is all well and good, and it will help you to stay in in the faster time frames. But when you get a volatility trigger on a slower time frame, you this is almost inevitably the result the price will simply retrace to within the spread of that uh, uh that candle it will then either congest or in this case it actually simply reversed higher and that is really quite a, a, a you know a brutal reversal but because i had seen the volatility in the faster time frames i sat in it for a little while but as soon as it comes because this triggers in real time it doesn't trigger once the the hourly candle has uh, has uh, completed it triggers uh, in real time so once that was triggered so that was actually my my signal to uh, to get out if you don't understand that and you certainly don't if you don't have some kind of indicator to tell you what is happening this is where most traders suffer the most damage in terms of not only their their, uh, their accounts but also in their confidence because you've seen this you know this move down you've got a bit of congestion then you you know you've got this nice bit of momentum building building and building 
And a lot of traders will jump in there. They will say, oh, great, it's moving. Now I'm going to get in. I'm going to take advantage of the, of the faster move. And that's when they get caught. They get caught on the wrong side of this trade. And of course, everything, I also keep uh, the, the individual lines of the CSI at the bottom here to help me. So that was really, as I said, an example of the S3 yesterday. And we've actually seen it in action this morning. Let's have a look what's happening on the Euro New Zealand in real time. And this is what I'm saying. So we've had here off, not quite, you know, we have to be, but it's it's close enough, it hasn't actually got to the R3, but we know this region is a strong region where price has certainly paused, reversed, it hasn't actually broken through yet, but the important thing about it is this is going to be a key level for the rest of the week. So that support and resistance using the R3 in particular from Camarilla, Let's go and see what's happening on the CSI at the moment, just to see where the um, and you can track the uh, the progress or otherwise of the pairs using uh, the matrix. And what the matrix also does, not only does it track the individual pair that you may or may not be trading, but it also looks at well, what are the other pairs doing? What are the other euro pairs doing? Well, we can see here the euro has been. Let's move that out of the way so we've put the euro up here which is the weakest euro well the euro aussie i have a very very long term short position in the euro aussie and it's still on and the reason i kept it on is because i'm actually being paid by my broker it, it you know it's earning me money it's earning its keep my short position so not only am i earning on the position itself but i'm earning a little bit of uh, rollover and this is something you really do have to bear in mind we talk about intro in we're just doing intraday at the moment you know going in and out um in the usually the london session sometime in the in the us session as well but we do have very longer term positions on but the reason for keeping those on uh, and you know and, and riding the oscillations in the price is that the, we are getting paid a positive rollover. I'm not paying the uh, the broker the privilege of being able to keep that position op uh, open. And the Euro Aussie has been in. Uh, if you want to see a consolidation phase, go and have a look at the uh, daily and weekly chart of the Euro Aussie because that is a, you know uh, that is one for the textbooks at the moment. So Euro. What's happening? Still selling off, still weak on the hourly. That little reversal that we saw here on the 15 came to come to a shuddering halt, but we know why it's come to a shuddering halt. It looks like the original primary trend may be uh, uh, re-establishing itself, certainly on the charts that we were looking at. And as I said, what we do with the matrix, um, you know, now we've seen the buying in, in the euro um, has, has come to an end, certainly come to an end against the uh, New Zealand. And we just you can just track it on uh, uh, the matrix. We have traders actually who just use the matrix. That's all they use. And certainly the new version of the matrix that we'll be um, uh, uh, delivering will have um, They'll have a, you have a means of, uh, of establishing whether the, the values that are being registered at the top and the bottom of the indicator, are they low, medium or high? And as I said, we've got a couple of uh, uh, traders who have, who you get to know it. You say, well, is 23, is that minus 23, is that a good number or a bad number? A uh, good, good number or bad number? Is that, uh, is that telling me, is that been a strong move to the downside or is it sort of average or really that's not, uh, you know, that's not been very much. Um, with the hourly chart, um, I have got a much better feel for the hourly chart. I haven't really talked about it this time. So, for example, these numbers at the moment, um, Aussie, Aussie dollar at uh, pos uh, positive 29 and a dollar CAD at minus 26. That's, they're not, they're not, for an hourly chart, no. There's, there's been some pips there, but, you know, values on the hourly chart, we've come up to the hundreds, 120, 130. That is a serious trend. You know, we really want to see these in the 40s, 50s and, and 60s down in the, in you know, below 30s. It's, yeah, that also tells us an awful lot about the trading conditions that you're actually going to face in these pairs. Right. I'm going to stop there. I'm going to pass over to David. If you've got any questions on anything, just uh, pop them in um, 
onto the chat box and we'll be happy to answer them for you. I'll just have a quick look here. Just open my... Uh, okay. Have you done everything? Yeah. You've done... Oh, David has actually answered that one. Do you want to answer it on air? Because someone might, and someone else might be interested in asking you about micro lots. Yeah? I didn't see that one, sorry. Have you not seen that one? Oh, no, sorry. OK, I'll pass over to David and I will say um, a goodbye. We are back later on this afternoon at three o'clock. I just have to go and I have a phone call that I have to go and deal with. So thank you so much for coming along. It's been great to have you here and I'll pass over to David. He's got um, you've got some charts to have a look at as well, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. brilliant. Thank you. And um, we'll catch you next time. Very quickly, Lee, just to answer your question, uh, how much is four micro lots? Uh, does it make a difference how much you have in your account? Uh, it's all about leverage. Um, a micro, you've basically got three sizes. You've got micro lots, you've got mini lots, and then you've got full lots. And basically a full lot is, roughly speaking, $10 a pip. Um, a mini lot is a dollar a pip, and a micro lot is a tenth of that. So 10 cents a pip, basically. Um, and depending on how much money in your account uh, will then dict I was going to say dictate, it doesn't necessarily dictate, it depends how much leverage you are comfortable with. Now we're all familiar with the accounts that have gone to three, 400, 400 to one leverage, um, which is just um, insane to be honest. Um, a lot of the companies now are capping it at 50 and there is talk of bringing it down even further down to something like 10 to one. As I say, in the funded program, we run at five to one on that, and that is the maximum leverage that we would suggest. And the reason that we focus on leverage so much is purely that leverage is a double-edged sword. Of course it is. Uh, if you go for high leverage, then you can uh, leverage your profits accordingly from very small amounts of money, which is what draws a lot of traders into this business. Um, but equally, your losses are also magnified by the same amount. So you have to match your, your leverage to what you have in your account to trade as conservatively as you are comfortable with. And that's really what it's about. So the four micro lots there is basically you're trading in that account on this account on TradingView that's got just under $1,000 in it. Uh, your maximum exposure, your maximum leverage is four micro lots. In other words, $4,000. In other words, four to one. Uh, and you will find that if you talk to traders who do this full time, who've done it for many years, these are the sorts of levels, the sorts of leverage that they will work at. If they have enough money in their account, they will trade at one to one. In other words, with no leverage. Um, and that is the perfect scenario where you can trade your own money and you're not using any leverage at all. Obviously, that takes you know substantial capital. If you've got a hundred thousand in your account, you can trade a full lot size with no leverage. Simple as that. And that's basically how it works. Hope that answers that one for you, Lee. Um, it's leverage is one of the most important things to understand because it is a double-edged sword, as I say. Just very quickly, I've gone to the array. I've pulled this up. This is on five, ten, fifteen. So this is pretty quick. Um, you can see the Aussie up here. It's up at the top. And bear in mind, just isolate out the Aussie there for you. There we are. You can see. Um, bear in mind that the currency array is very much like the trend monitor and the trend dots. The difference between the currency array and the currency matrix, which we get asked a lot. If I go to the currency matrix as well. In fact, let me stay here for a moment. Um, the difference is that the currency array takes a more considered view. It takes a longer term view, if you like, of changes in trend. So you can see down at the bottom here, we've got the Euro Aussie is the most heavily, it's the it's the weakest at the moment. Same down here, and it's in here as well. It shows you the strength of that trend. It shows you which ones are coming up to overbought and oversold up and down the second ranking ladder here. So you get these signals coming in all the time which are giving you clues as to which pairs to go and analyze. You know, is the Aussie yen, for example, coming up to an overbought position as far as the five minute and the faster time frames are concerned? Is the Euro Aussie down the bottom here coming up to potentially an oversold situation where you can look for a reversal? If you're a reversal trader, you know, I said it before, I say it all the time, my eye is always drawn to these tops and bottoms the whole time. Same is true, I have to say, of the currency heat map, which again, works on a different time frame also. 
you know, my eye is always drawn to the top. What's at the top? What is the most bullish on the currency heat map? What is the most bearish on the currency heat map? And therefore, you know, what is potentially offering me the opportunity to get into a reversal situation earlier rather than later? I'm not interested in the ones up here because these are either traveling up this way or down this way. What I'm interested in is the group at the bottom and the group at the top, particularly if they're all similar pairs. We've got the Aussie and New Zealand dollar here. So we've got, uh, you know, the same counter currency there. We've got uh, the Aussie here, as you would expect. If the Aussie is at the top here, and we've got what one, two, three at the top here. You can isolate that out. Let's just isolate that out. There we go. So you've got not all of them. The Aussie New Zealand is an interesting one, as is the Aussie CAD, because they are trading, you are trading two commodity currencies, and therefore, in a sense, you're trading a similar risk profile because commodity currencies are generally considered as risk currencies. And therefore, in these two, you're trading, as I say, risk against risk in a way. And also bear in mind, Aussie New Zealand is a very close relationship, not only geographically, but also um, from a trading perspective, very close trading partners not trading in the same sort of commodities, um, but certainly from a trading perspective, you know, there's a lot of similarity in terms of interest rates, how their economies are doing, et cetera, et cetera. So you tend to find that, but obviously what I'm looking at here is very much the dollar up here at the top. You've got the the uh, the, the Aussie, the counter currency here at the bottom. And then what you're looking for is obviously, you know, is this going to move? And what you see on this sell arrangement here. These are the cells intraday. So this is one minute, five, 10, 15, right the way out to a month. And this is giving you a heads up as to whether these cells are changing. If this starts to change to, to green right the way through, particularly in these slower time frames, then you're going to start to see this moving up the ladder. But bear in mind, these are all weighted. The um, the weights that a one minute time frame would carry intuitively would tell you that it's not going to be as significant as if the change in a 15 minute or an hour, a four hourly or a weekly or a monthly. So these are all weighted according to this ranking ladder. So these don't move up and down as they do on the array or indeed on the matrix. But what you will find if you're trading slower term uh, time frames, if you're looking at this over days, you will find that these move maybe one or two slots or three slots in that sort of time horizon because these are weighted according to the sentiment of the time frame. So time frame carries weight, and we've calculated that we've we've uh, we've uh, included that in terms of how these then move up and down the ranking ladder. So these move at a much slower rate, much slower pace. If you're trading slower term frames, time frames, great to look at this particular ranking ladder. But the visual here is basically giving you a whole array of what is going on across the time frame. So on the one minute Aussie dollar at the moment is is bearish. And then it's bullish on these particular time frames and bearish out to 30 in the hour. So get, and these are constantly changing. You can see up and down constantly. And once you start to see a move develop, you will start to see these cells start to change color. And you'll start to see maybe red coming in. It'll start to filter across, move across here, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a great, it's a single workspace which gives you all the sort of condensed information without having to hunt around through hundreds of different charts. It's a compact view of 250 odd cells in one place. Just go back to uh, where we are. There we go. What have we got up here? New Zealand dollar. Okay, that's where we're at the moment. The other thing I'd also say is that in terms of commodity currencies, these three here, you've got the CAD, the Aussie, and the New Zealand. When you start to see moves like this in one, I'm not saying they always move around together, the three of them, but they are often closely associated. Obviously, you've got to bear in mind with Canadian, you know, that is heavily influenced by oil. So that may break away from the other two from time to time. But once you start to see moves like this, and perhaps the Aussie isn't following, it maybe gives you an opportunity to think, hang on a minute, you know, is this an opportunity for, do, for me to do something on the Aussie? Because this is, in other words, this is leading. Maybe this is going to uh, follow suit in the Aussie and rotate into Aussie selling or Aussie buying as well. So always keep a mind on these three commodity currencies, what they're doing. If one is leading the others, then maybe it'll give you an opportunity. And in terms of risk currencies, you're always looking at this, the whole concept of, of the CSI from risk perspective, where you're looking at what's going on in terms of Swiss franc, what is going on in terms of the dollar, what is going on in terms of the Japanese yen. And that will also give you a straight through view on risk. We just hop over finally onto the, see what's going on in terms of US equity markets. This is the YM, NQ and ES on five minute top line. Bottom line is the daily. 
I'm just looking over on trading view dollars going sideways at the moment um, it's uh, it's a little bit choppy there so it's just in a sideways move and similar sort of perspective here you can see the VPOC here on all three time frames so equity markets at the moment mm -mm. A little bit of, uh, of perceived risk on, but it's very, very minor at the moment. We had this big, um, uh, I was going to say disconnect, but certainly in terms of this is what went on yesterday. The, the YM recovered, the NQ didn't, and the ES recovered partially on the day. So it was a, a little bit mixed yesterday, the YM uh, recovering, but the other two really just uh, staying flat and negative for much of the session. So it, was, uh, it wasn't huge risk on but this certainly was reflected in terms of, of the Dow Jones on the YM. I'm going to wrap up there because we've been going a long time now, a little bit over time, sorry about that. Just to round off, here we are on uh, where you'll find all the bits and pieces. Um, this is quantumtrading.com, got MT45, Ninja Trader 78, Trading View, as I mentioned earlier on, we're working on that right now, and Trade Station's up and running, so that's available for both Trade Station Securities which has the full panorama of uh, trading indicators, the quantum indicators, and of course, the immensely powerful radar screen with up to a thousand cells running on that. And you can run the indicators in there as well. It's fantastic. We were hoping to have it up this week. Sorry, we've just been rather busy doing a whole bunch of things, uh, but we will endeavor to have that up next week. As I say, TradingView we're working on now. We'll get all the other indicators ported across. So if you have the TradingView indicators, uh, you and if you've got the full package, you will receive all those indicators free of charge. You won't pay any more. Uh, but once they are released, probably in a few weeks' time, then we will increase that price. It's 600 and something at the moment. It will go up to be aligned with the MT45, um, a full package at 894. So they will be pretty much comparable. So if you're thinking about investing in the trading view indicators, it's not a bad time to do it because you'll get all of those for free that's but that's only if you invest in the full package you can buy on the epp or you can buy outright but you will get all those indicators free of charge it's just the way we work this is where you'll find anna annacooling.com uh, all the books there on uh, amazon the kindle's up there and uh, you'll find links to the complete uh, forex trading program here and also to the funded forex account and you've got links to all the indicators there as well this is the uh, the quantum education site here we are this is the complete forex trading program we call it that because that's exactly what it is it's comprehensive doesn't really do it justice uh, we have a lot of students on the program now all levels of experience uh, a lot of people coming in having read the book and that is a great foundation to start with Anna's books and then come into the program where we take you on to the next level and now we've wrapped in the funded program here alongside it which means that once you've learned and what I said earlier, discovered that consistency that you have in maybe a smaller account, you can jump into the funded Forex program, you can apply that knowledge and you can, you can uh, profit accordingly because we give you a kickback on profits every time you go through the various levels. You can start at 5,000, 10,000, 15,000. It's all explained here. There's a link on the front page there. Uh, you start with a 5,000, 10,000 or 15,000 account, which is down the bottom here somewhere. There we go. Once you've passed that evaluation accounts level, which is basically about you proving to yourself you can be consistent in a smaller account and also showing, demonstrating to us that that's the case. Once we've both uh, uh, met at that point, if you like, we then multiply it by four. So if you start on the 15,000 account, this one will, will uh, increase your capital available to 60,000 and thereafter it doubles. So you go from 60,000 to 120,000 to 240 to 480 and on up to the 2 million. Um, same, but you'll be trading the same way um, because you've proved your consistency. So you get a payback in profit, comes back to you all the time and you trade these much larger accounts. Um, and that's why we put it together to give you, our students, the opportunity to have access to these sorts of funds, which perhaps you wouldn't have otherwise. And bear in mind, you're trading our money. So this is there's no risk to you, absolutely no risk at all. You can carry on trading your own accounts. You can uh, uh, follow them in, in, this, in the funded account. Absolutely no problem at all. But there is no risk to you. There is a one-off fee you pay. That's it. There's nothing else to pay. You then have access to the accounts, to the money, and you carry on and, uh, and start trading it live. As I say, there is no risk to you, but we make sure we our money is protected. Obviously, we have to. There are risk and money management rules available uh, as part of the program. So that's it. Hope you've enjoyed today. Hope you uh, found it useful. Thank you very much indeed for coming along today. 
just cast my eye over onto the Aussie dollar, which is now spiking up because the dollar has spiked lower and it's actually got a volatility trigger on it. It's come in in real time. This is on 15 minutes. So the dollar is uh, spiking lower. You can see the move in the Aussie dollar there as well. Dollar CAD, just uh, flatlining there a little bit. So there we are. That's it. That's us done for today. Thank you very much indeed. Hope you've enjoyed it. We will see you later on today at three o'clock US time. That's for the uh, futures session in the US markets, indices and, and commodities and all that good stuff. And uh, if not, enjoy the rest of the trading day. Enjoy the rest of the trading week. You will get updates in terms of the uh, webinar uh, pre uh, schedules each week. So please don't worry. So thank you very much indeed. See you soon and enjoy the rest of the, uh, is this meeting available to watch again? Yes, it is, Lee. It will be up on uh, YouTube and this YouTube channel, hopefully later on today for you. So you'll be able to watch it again there. Thanks very much indeed. See you soon and bye for now.